knowing and executing. We're talking about employee strengths. When you think about knowing and executing employee strengths, just kind of reflect for a moment on those opportunities when you know of someone, or maybe yourself, you were so passionate about what you wanted to do. But you may have had a boss or a team that did not quite understand how to handle you, for lack of a better word. <laughs> or maybe the word is to enable you. Maybe that's a better word. So this is kind of the direction where we're headed to today. And to just also to make a uh, broader connection to Jamie, uh, Dr. Reeser's earlier um, presentation, I asked her the question about how or where does personality assessments or behavioral assessments fit on her neurological uh, levels? And of course she said it fit in the areas of the capabilities, the behavior, and the context, or essentially the area that the word was used about narcissism or that rugged individualism. And so then she said that the categories above, the ones that she said were more holistic, that's probably where you would want ideally for your assessments to be. And she did say that in our packets, the information about Roger Bailey is in there. So having said that, I'm sure many of us have been in a situation where you've been in a meeting and everybody's looking and you've considered every potential risk except the risks of avoiding all risks. At some point you have to take what you know and put it into action. So these are just some sample personality assessments, I'm not advocating any one of them, but I just wanted to give you a sample of some that typically can be used or are used in hiring people or in uh, professional development seminars in your offices and workplaces. Essentially the broad category, emotional intelligence, what they refer to it as. The MBT stands for the Myers-Briggs type indicator type at work. And then of course there's the uh, true colors um, assessment. And then something about the Enneagram types. If you're unfamiliar with Enneagram, Ennea, E-N-N-E-A, essentially means nine and gram means writing. So it's the writing of nine. If you can imagine a symbol, a circle with nine points on that circle that represent various personality traits, somewhere along there the coordination of your numbers of one, two, three, or nine, eight, seven, supposed to give you more insight into the personality and behavior. But again, just wanted to give you a sample of some of these here. So scenario one then, for example, why we might use personality assessments is because we want to create employee awareness of behaviors, our own behaviors and our colleagues' behaviors. Attempts to highlight boundaries. How far do I go with someone? How far will I let someone go with me, so to speak? And then of course, a very critical one is that knowing about other people, it really enables you to have a communication entrance into their lives or to their work or to their performance. That really allows you to influence them so that you can motivate them. And then of course Gandhi has said here, I suppose leadership at one time meant muscles, but today it means getting along with people. Another example or another scenario of, as to how personality assessments are used, perhaps when it comes to decision making, strategic planning for example, what are going to be our goals? Are we going to be extremely innovative? Is it time to reinvent the wheel? Or are we going to stick with what we know for another cycle? Projects, and then all important, if there's a crisis, what happens? What do we do? When I finally got a management position, I found out how hard it is to lead and manage people. And this came from Guy Kawasaki. So for example, just to kind of explore, this is the sample of the true colors. So for example, if you look at the at work row, which is all of these up here, let's say you scored or you fall in the color range of gold. It means at work you are a stabilizer, detail oriented, responsible, you organize. If you're green, you're conceptual, uh, you like challenges, you're innovative, and you're very progressive. Leadership category, let's say you are a blue, then you often talk about the potential of people. You're kind of democratic. You have a family spirit. Let's say that you're orange in the leadership category. 
Well, you're about the present time. What are we doing now? What can we do now? Or what action are we about? And it's okay to have fun. So as you look at this, what happens to be your color? Just by a show of hand, anybody want to share? Yes, orange. orange. So you're flexible, independent, hands-on, and you perform. Okay, and then your leadership, you're about now, what kinds of actions can be done, and uh, what kind of fun you bring about it. So earlier you mentioned about helping the, uh, participating in the Big Brothers and Big Sisters program, so you are about now. Because those teenagers, I would assume, are our future. So what can we do now to embrace our future? Another specific example, when you look at strategic planning at work, so typically, someone who is blue, they would likely be a good team player, they have the collaborative spirit. The gold person would be the one perhaps to organize the strategic planning templates, giving the structure to the whole process. If you look at the green, the green would be innovative aspects in the plan, goes back to again, hey, we know we've achieved this particular goal for the past 10 years, it may be time now to do something bold and more audacious. And then when it gets to the crisis, or the leadership aspect. What is leadership like during times of a crisis? Well, the orange says, it's okay to find the fun while performing critical work. Is that somewhat example of what you're saying? You can kind of see the humor in it, the fun in it. The gold might say, well, wait a minute. Let's bring order to this mess or to this chaos. So again, this is just a sample of why knowing your employees, it kind of gives you a good sense of where to place people on the proverbial bus, as they say. The takeaways. Consider using emotional intelligence as a glimpse into personal and employee behavioral personality. Develop and enable leaders to influence workplace culture through a position or job description in addition to performing in the position or job description. And then finally, design a work plan of employee characteristics to be used in work performance. Simply, who is best for this? Where, where do I place a particular person? Who can I count on in times of a crisis? Who is more proactive? Who may be more reactive? And here's the bus. Getting the right people on the bus. All right, let us thank Brian. Thank you.